This first problem says a caterer is planning a party for 64 people. The customer has $150 to spend. A $39 pan of pasta feeds 14 people. A $12 sandwich tray feeds six people. How many pans of pasta and how many sandwich trays should the caterer make? Now the most important line in this entire thing is how many pans of pasta and how many sandwich trays should the caterer make? That's the question that we have to answer. In English, the first sentence is the most important. In math, the last sentence is most important. Now, in this problem, there are six numbers. Of those six numbers, three of them are about money. Three of them are about something else. So I'm going to highlight the three numbers that are about money one of our equations is going to come from those three numbers about money. So in this first row, I'm going to write money. The other three numbers, what do they describe? People. People, 64 people, 14 people, six people. So our other one is going to be people. Our two equations are going to come from money and people. Now, within money and people, there's two specific things that they're talking about. They are talking about trays of pasta, so or pans of pasta. And the other thing they are talking about is sandwich trays. Okay, using this table, let's see if we can put the numbers in the right place. So this area right here is going to be money involving pans of pasta. Which number is money involving pans of pasta? Oops. Wait, I have a question. $39 is money for pans of pasta. 12 is sandwich trays money. The other money value I will put over here. That would be the total amount of money. Now let's turn these three numbers into an equation. One pan of pasta is $39. How would you figure out how much two pans of pasta is? Add 39, Add 39 plus 39 or take 39 plus times two. two. Three pans of pasta would be 39 times three. So we're doing 39 times the number of pans of pasta. That's our X. We're doing $12 times the number of sandwich trays. And when we add those together, it's going to total $150. Now let's look at the people numbers. People for pans of pasta. What's the number? Uh, 14. 14. Now, one pan of pasta feeds 14 people. Two pans of pasta feeds 14 times 2. So you're doing 14 times the number of pans of pasta. You're doing six people per sandwich tray times the number of sandwich trays. And that is going to add up to a total of 64 people. So using this table to organize types of numbers and then organize it into your x's and your y's. It helps you to build those equations if that's something that has been difficult for you in the past. Once you have the equations written, you now have some options. You could try to solve this by substitution. I wouldn't recommend it. I would probably solve this one by elimination. To solve it by elimination, remember, you need to get one of your variables to go away when you add them together. Could we make 12 and 6 match somehow? Yeah, we would multiply the bottom equation by negative 2. That would give us negative 28x minus 12y equals negative 128. Our top equation we're not changing. Now those two equations are ready for elimination. You're ready for elimination when you have that positive negative match. So if you add these two equations together, the y's are going to eliminate. 39 plus a negative 28 is 11, so we have 11x. 
150 plus a negative 128 is 22. So x equals 2. x is pans of pasta, so one part of our answer is 2 pans of pasta. Now we have to figure out how many sandwich trays. How do we figure out how many sandwich trays? We need to plug in x equals 2 into one of the original equations. I think I'm going to pick the 14x plus 6y equals 64. And I figured out that it would be six sandwich trays. Yep. You are planting a 160 square foot garden with shrubs and perennial plants. Each shrub costs $42 and requires 16 square feet of space. Each perennial plant costs $6 and requires eight square feet of space. You plan to spend a total of $270. How much of each type of plant should you buy to fill the garden? That last sentence really tells you what your X's and Y's are. That tells you that the types of plants are your X's and Y's. So one type is shrubs. I can't spell shrubs. And the other type is perennials. And sorry about that blip. And then this last part will be totals. In this problem, there's two types of numbers. The number types are money and square feet or amount of space that each thing takes. I want you to try to take a minute and write the two equations. Be brave. Give it a try. If you're wrong, it's not a big deal. We'll just erase it and fix it. I want you to be brave and try. So if you're watching the video, pause the video, try writing the equations, and then play. Okay, my first amount of money is $42. That's my shrubs. So I've got $42 per shrub. If you can use the word per, that's definitely telling you that you're going to multiply probably times one of your variables. And my perennials are $6 per perennial. And that's going to add up to a total cost of $270. So that's all of the money parts of the problem. Next, the space parts of the problem, the square feet parts. The shrub is 16 square feet of space per shrub and 8 square feet of space per perennial equals a total of 160 square feet in our garden. Once you have the equations written, now you have to think about how you would solve them. I would definitely advise against substitution on this because you'd have to like divide both sides by 6 or divide both sides by 8, and that doesn't sound like a lot of fun. Um, I would probably do elimination, and I would focus on trying to get my y's to cancel. So 6 and 8. If you just want to not think about it very much, 6 times 8 is 48. So you could make the top one be 48y and the bottom one be negative 48y. Or is there another number that you can multiply by 24? So we could multiply the top by 4 to get 24y and the bottom by negative 3 to get negative 24y. So then our goal would be to have 24y and negative 24y because then when we added the two equations together, they would cancel. Number three is a little bit different and I want to make sure we go through it. And I'm basically going to lead you through every part of this because there's two things that are a little bit weird. Okay, first of all, walnuts cost 350 per pound. Almonds cost 250 per pound. If the local grocery store is selling a mixture of eight pounds of almonds and walnuts at 325 per pound, how many pounds of each type are you purchasing? So first we're going to talk about money. And the first thing they talk about is walnuts. Actually, I'm just going to use W for walnuts and A for almonds. Okay. 
Okay. Walnuts are 350 per pound. Anytime you see the word per, that's going to mean multiply. So 3.50x, 350 times the number of pounds of walnuts. Oops, I was going to use W, not X. Then almonds are 250 per pound of almonds. So 250 times the number of pounds of almonds. And that needs to equal the total cost. Does anybody see a problem with the total cost that we have in this problem? Yeah, it don't tell us. It's not big enough. It, it doesn't really tell us. But they do tell us that they are selling eight pounds of the mixture. So 325 <laughs> times eight pounds. Someone with a calculator, help me out with that. Hold on. $26. $26. So we are going to spend $26 total. 350 times the amount of walnuts plus 250 times the amount of almonds equals $26 for that whole eight pound mixture. So they're not really giving you the total. They're telling you an eight pound mixture is going to be 325 per pound. The whole price for that would be $26. So this is where that number came from. Now the other thing is number of pounds. And I know that my total is eight pounds. But notice I've used all of the numbers that are in the problem. So what do we use for the number of pounds of walnuts and the number of pounds of almonds? We use W plus A or X plus Y equals eight. So when it doesn't give you that extra number, like the other ones we were doing money compared to number of people. This we're doing money for pounds, and it doesn't tell you how many pounds, so it's W plus A, or X plus Y. I now want you to try number four on your own. If you're watching the video, pause the video, be brave, try it. This is where you can make mistakes in a safe environment, because if you get it wrong, we can go, oh, whoopsie, and just erase it and write the correct thing. So be brave, give it a try. Go for it. Okay, so muffins are 350. So 350 times the number of muffins. Bagels are 225. 225 times the number of bagels. That equals a total of $220. All of those numbers are money. The other total that we have is 80 baked goods. What should we put for that equation? X plus Y. X plus y. The number of muffins plus the number of bagels equals 80. Now, how would we solve this one? There are at least four ways that you could solve this. You could solve this using substitution. You could subtract x on both sides to get y equals 80 minus x, and then plug that in in place of the y. So you could do substitution if you love substitution. If you prefer elimination, what I would do is multiply the bottom by negative 2.25 so that I had positive 2.25y and negative 2.25y and then I'd solve and figure out how many muffins. Once you know how many muffins, you can do 80 minus that to figure out how many bagels. So there are, you can definitely do this one substitution or elimination. On your assignment, I believe the instructions say to do the front side equations and solve it, back side just equations. We're going to change that. On the front side, you do still need to write an equation, a set of equations for all of them. Pick three of them that you would like to fully solve. And then the back side, you just have to On the back side, you just have to write the system of equations.